At eight years old, I was sexually molested by my stepfather for nearly a decade. We lived in a trailer park in a low-income area near Chicago where I was surrounded by gangs, drugs, and violence. And throughout that time, my stepfather would continue to take my innocence. My body's response further confused me and my body's arousal, my young brain, just could not understand. Is this how all fathers treated their sons? I wouldn't sleep. I struggled in school. I had constant thoughts of what was happening to me. It was like a horror movie playing in my head every moment of every day, leading to my first suicide attempt at 12 years old. And while I recovered in the hospital, my stepfather would remain by my side as to ensure I wouldn't say too much. And in my mind, all I wanted him was to be dead. And when I was 16 years old, I suspected my stepfather of abusing other children, and I knew I had to say something. He would be arrested, and he would be, admit to sexually molesting me over 50 times. After high school, I earned my way into Purdue University looking for something new and normal. I would study and I would even go and join a fraternity. But there was always that horror movie playing in my head. And at some point I discovered alcohol and I found that drinking made the scenes black out. The only problem was I had to keep on drinking. And adding to the trauma, it was the loss of two very close people to me. My best friend to suicide and a former girlfriend to murder. I took my friend's suicide so hard that I didn't even attend his funeral. And my girlfriend's murder was the first time I'd lost someone that wasn't from their own hands. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be the last. At 20 years old, I joined the Army for two reasons. To be a part of a team and the possibility of achieving an honorable death. I no longer wanted to live, but I still wanted my life to have purpose. Having structure and objectives allowed to keep my mind busy and keep my demons at bay. I didn't fully understand the weight of my military duty and the possibility of taking lives in faraway lands. And then 9-11 happened, and as you all know, the world completely changed. My first of five combat deployments to Afghanistan was in 2004. And while I was in Afghanistan, it felt very familiar, as if I never knew when something bad was gonna happen. And downtown Kabul felt exactly like downtown Chicago. I just never knew when I was going to take my final breaths on every patrol I went on. I never knew if I was going to make it back home. And through my time in the military, I had become a Special Forces Green Beret. And those combat deployments were completely different. We would spend 30 days at a time away from the security of our fire base. And on one such patrol, I heard a loud boom I saw a cloud of smoke go into the air. An Afghan soldier had been vaporized. And everything happened so fast that I wasn't able to process the trauma that was happening. Because that exact same moment, a Taliban member shot a young girl in the head and my team was ambushed. And yes, we did save that little girl. Fighting in combat is the goal of many Green Berets but there's a cost associated with combat. Over the years, the trauma from my combat was compounded with the trauma of my earlier life. And at some point, I felt nothing but pain, true pain in my mind and in my soul. I knew I had to change my life, so I requested I transferred to Key West, Florida, where I became an instructor at one of the most competitive schools that the Army has to offer. 
However, adjusting back to real life was hard. I couldn't escape the depths of my depression. And I was feeling, all, I feel, I was feeling as if I lost all hope to live. I'd be prescribed various antidepressant medications, but they numbed everything inside me. Essentially, I was a walking corpse. All right, let's take a breath here now, all right? Whew, all right? I've shared some heavy trauma truth with you so far, all right, and I thank you so much for bearing with me. I know this is hard to hear and to process. My best friends out there in the show, all right, refer to me as the Michael Jordan of trauma. All right. Not what I wish to be known for, but so be it. I share these experiences with you to help create some context because I found a way to relieve all the suffering that I had inside to help me not suffer in silence. But first, I would still like to share a little bit more of my life's journey and one of my most transformative events. The birth of my children. You would think that this would give me a new life a new perspective, that I would find joy in living. But it was the complete opposite. My children being born and me becoming a father brought me even deeper in depression. I saw how precious life was, but how I took in that from some other people while I was deployed. I removed human beings from this earth and there are parents out there that no longer have a child. And over time, this crushed my soul. I saw the innocence of my children, and I'd wondered how could someone possibly take that away from me when I was just eight years old. Holding my children, teaching them how to swim, and reading to them, taking care of every aspect of their being. But I couldn't keep my brain from spiraling. I watched my children sleep. The thoughts of when I was eight years old continuously returned. Every bath time, every special moment, I felt my mind wandering back to that horror film that was in my head. This constantly distracted me from my children and it broke my heart. I wasn't present for them. And I was all alone because there's no way that anyone in this world could possibly know how I felt inside. Before things started to get better, and I promised you they did. All right, so stay with me. <laughs> There were more suicide attempts, treatment for alcoholism, cognitive behavioral therapy, and learning how to live with PTSI. You've heard it more commonly called PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. The problem that I and other people like me have with this term is that it carries some stigma around it. Like there's something that mysteriously went wrong with me. But clearly, there's no mystery about it, and there should be no stigma around it. I was injured time and time again, my whole life. PTSI is post-traumatic stress injury. While various treatments helped me over time, eventually that horror film in my head always returned. And then I was introduced into a unique type of treatment. See, when you suffer from PTSI, it impacts your body's fight or flight response and essentially locks it into a constant fight mode. I want you to think of it like hypervigilance and I explain it as if it feels like someone can walk up behind you and shoot you out in the back of your head 
at any moment. There, are no, there is a bundle of nerves on both sides of your neck called the stellar ganglion. Those nerves are connected to the sympathetic nervous system, which connects to your amygdala portion of your brain that houses our fight or flight response. The treatment I was introduced to is called the stellar ganglion block. And it involves taking a fine needle and injecting into that nerve bundle on either side of your neck, just above your collarbone, often just on one side, but sometimes on both. For me, this took the treatment of the past. This treatment took me the pain of the past into long-term memories that I don't feel like are constantly happening to me over and over in the present. The traumatic memories no longer constantly disturb my life. I was set free. But this wasn't a silver bullet. I just didn't get an injection in the side of my neck and all my trauma was gone. There's often times I regress. My brain automatically thinks I'll never truly get better. But that's different now. By not reliving my trauma in the present, I have the clarity of mind to use the tools and techniques taught to me by doctors and therapists, for example, the use of mindfulness, peaceful place visualization exercises, and acceptance and commitment therapy. I'm now able to tell my wife how I'm feeling. The pain lasts for 18 hours instead of 18 days. And suicide is no longer at the forefront of my mind. The desire to kill my stepfather has faded away. I've even pondered the thoughts of offering him this treatment. My life may seem different than most, but trauma at any level has lasting effects. You don't have to be molested as a child or experience the horrors of war to have trauma and to suffer from PTSI. And according to the Veteran Affairs Office, every single one of us will experience at least one traumatic event in our life, and it, which can lead to an estimated 13 million Americans that suffer from PTSI annually. I wish that I could say that trauma could be cured and that you could just receive a treatment and get rid of it. But the real truth is, we can only learn how to live with it. Life doesn't get any easier. We only manage how to do harder things better. I'm gonna repeat that again just a little slower for you. Life does not get any easier. We only manage how to do harder things better. And when you ask for help and lean into professional resources, treatments and therapy, the harder things become more manageable. My path to recovery has been a long journey, but I needed the help from others. And I'm the one who had to speak the words, I need help. And if you're one of the millions of people suffering, please know you're not alone. Help and support are out there. It all starts by you saying, I need help. I can now go to dinner and be present rather than a bystander at the table with my family. I no longer drive to work crying and thinking about driving my car into the next tree along the side of the road. I don't reach for alcohol to cope with the stresses of life. And expressing myself has become a lot easier. I can now read to my children with that hor without that horror movie playing in my head. And rather than thinking about dying, 
I'm focused on living. <laughs> yeah. there. In closing, I'd like to leave you with this. Trauma will always exist. And for many of us, it's inevitable and anticipated evil. But we can face that evil and learn to control it versus the other way around. We don't have to suffer in silence. Lean into the resources and community around you. I did. I accept that bad times will reappear, but now I know they don't last. Now I know happiness and joy always returns. And I thank you so much for being with me today. Come on, all right.